In this video, we're going to go through the ID software mixer and the different features that help you control ID24. If you want information on a particular section of the ID software mixer, then go to the video description for the timestamps of the different sections. Simply put, the ID software mixer is the control center for your ID interface, enabling you to customize monitoring, functionality, and settings to make ID24 suit your workflow. The ID software mixer is made up of a few different sections. The channel section displays your analog and digital inputs, as well as your door returns, or in other words, the audio coming back from your digital audio workstation or computer. The master section contains the cue mixes and the monitor controls. Then finally, you have the system panel, which enables you to control your routing and other settings. We will look at the routing options available in more detail later in this video. On a Mac, double click on the ID app in your application menu. This will create a menu bar item in the top right of the screen. The mixer window should then open so long as your unit is connected. If you close the mixer, you can reopen it at any time by clicking on the ID icon and selecting Show Mixer. On Windows, click the ID app in the application menu. This will create an ID icon in the system tray. Right-clicking on this will allow you to open the mixer window and adjust ID24 settings such as sample rate and buffer size. So the channel section is what you will use to build your main and cue mixes, or in other words, the audio that you want to send out of ID24. Whether it's your full door mix going to your main speakers or a separate headphone mix with a click track to an artist you're recording, for example. There are three kinds of channels, mic channels, digital channels, and door returns. And these individual types can be hidden using these channel toggle buttons in the master section to help keep things tidy. The mic channels show you the signal from the mic and line inputs, as well as the instrument input. The digital channel shows you the signal from the optical input, and the door returns display the audio coming back from your computer, where the ID24 output in your door will correspond to the door return channel. For example, output one and two will go to door one and two, and output three and four will go to door three and four. This will come in handy when sending out separate artist mixes or processing audio with outboard gear. At the top of each channel is a customizable channel name. You can double click on this and type the name you want to help organize the mixer. If you forget the input type, you can hover over the channel toggle buttons and the type of input will appear under the name. On the analog and digital input channels, a polarity reverse button can be found below the naming strip. This is for dealing with phasing issues caused by using multiple microphones, such as top and bottom miking a snare or miking the front and back of a guitar cap. Next up, you have the pan controls, which let you position the signal anywhere across the stereo field. You also have the stereo grouping button, letting you control the levels of a stereo source by grouping together two adjacent channels. The solo and mute buttons allow you to quickly isolate channels, which can be useful if you want to check that a particular input is sounding good without any distractions from other sources. Finally, you have the meter and fader. The meter displays the dBFS value, which is the level that comes into your computer. If the input is set too loud, then the peak LED will light up, meaning you've clipped your converters and you could end up with some bad sounding distortion. We recommend setting your levels so at the loudest peak, you're peaking at around minus 12 dB. The fader is used to set the monitoring level of a channel for a particular mix you're working on. So when you turn up one of the input channels, you're actually making use of the low latency monitoring, letting you listen to your inputs without any delay. It's worth noting that changing the level of the fader is not actually adjusting the gain of that input, only the monitoring level. In the master section, you are able to toggle between different mixes, your main mix, typically used for your speaker output, and the cue mixes, generally used for creating custom headphone mixes for artists you're recording. Simply click on the mix you want to edit and adjust the faders and pans on any of the channels that you want to hear. If you want to preview the cue mix to hear what your artist will be hearing, you can hit the solo button in the cue tabs. You can also adjust the master level of the cue mix here too. The meters will show you the overall level of the cue, and the chronometer along the bottom will show you the level over the last 20 seconds, so you can see that audio is being sent, and you can also keep an eye out for clipping. Next, we have the monitor control buttons. Here, you have a number of different functions that can be used to help improve your workflow in the studio. Dim, cut, alt speaker, talkback, polarity, and mono. Alt speaker will switch to use an alternate set of outputs. This can be configured in the system panel, but is typically used if you have two sets of speakers and want to quickly switch between them for referencing. The talkback button opens up a line of communication between the engineer and artist, either using one of the mic inputs, any mic connected to your computer, like a USB mic, 
or even your computer's built-in mic input. This is configured in the system panel. The mono button will sum the stereo mix bus into a mono signal, which is useful for checking if your mix will sound good on mono sources such as mobile phones. The polarity button will flip one side of the stereo field whilst also activating mono, using phase cancellation to cancel out the center of stereo signals and playing only the sides. This is a great way to get mix inspiration by removing the center pan signals in existing records, or for checking the sides of your own mix to make sure that any reverbs and delay tails are sounding as good as they can. There are dedicated buttons on ID24 to cut and dim the speaker output, which will temporarily mute or lower the level of the output while retaining your preferred listening level. Perfect for having a quick word with someone in the studio. You can adjust and set what level the dim button lowers the level to in the system panel. Each of the non-dedicated monitor controls can be assigned to one of the physical function buttons by right-clicking and selecting the function button you want to assign it to. This gives quick and flexible hardware control when in the middle of a session. The system panel is where you can change most of the inner workings of ID24. On the left-hand side, you have the digital settings. Here, you can select the digital protocol you want to use for your digital inputs and outputs, if you're using it, either ADAT or SPDIF. Below this is the preferred clocking source for when using the digital I.O. When using ID24 on its own or setting ID24 as the master clock, you can leave this set to internal. However, when wanting to sync ID24 off an external device, you can select the digital input here. If the indicator is red, then this indicates that there is no clock signal on the input. This could be because a cable isn't connected or the wrong digital protocol is being used. A yellow indicator shows that a valid clock is available, but the sample rate doesn't match the current sample rate of ID24. A green indicator means that a valid clock is present on the input and is at the correct sample rate, so you're ready to record. Below this, you have the mono mode, letting you adjust which output is used during mono summing, either the left or right speaker individually, or both at the same time. Finally, at the bottom, you have the trim controls, where you can adjust the amounts that the outputs are reduced by when you activate dim, and where you can adjust the level of your alt speaker outputs so the volume remains consistent when you switch between different sets of speakers. And now we move on to the routing panel. The sources are displayed horizontally along the top and the outputs vertically on the left. To route the signal, click the button that lines up with both the source and destination you want. By default, the main mix is routed to analog outputs one and two, which means that everything you have turned up in the main mix will be sent to the main speaker outputs one and two. The second set of line outputs are set to alt speaker by default, which means that when you press the alt speaker button, this output will switch to play your main mix. By default, the headphones are set to main mix, playing exactly the same thing that comes out of your speaker outputs. However, if you've built a low latency monitoring mix for an artist on one of the Q mixes and you want to send it to the headphones, you would select one of the Q mixes for the headphone output. Door through allows you to directly route signal from your door to a physical output, bypassing all of ID24's routing and volume controls. This is really useful if you have a separate monitor controller or you want to send audio to external gear. You will need to be careful of using door through on your outputs as it will send full volume audio to your speakers, which might not be very pleasant. You will get a warning explaining this every time you select it, just in case you press it by mistake. You can set the outputs to mono by pressing the stereo button on the left. This will allow you to choose different sources for each output. This is useful if you want to send two different mono signals to different pieces of outboard gear from outputs three and four, for example. The routing matrix works exactly the same for digital outputs as it does for the analog outputs. By default, the digital channels are all set to door through, meaning you can send a signal out of outputs nine and 10 in your door, and it will be sent to the first two channels of the digital output. The other tab in the routing panel is the talkback tab, where you can select the input that you'll be using for your talkback source. This is your way of staying in contact with an artist by speaking directly into their headphones. Here you have the option to use one of ID24's inputs, whether analog or digital, or you can use an external source, which could be your computer's built-in mic or even a USB microphone. When a talkback source is selected, that channel will change into a talkback channel in the ID software mixer window. A talkback channel can be identified by its solo and mute buttons changing into a talkback button, which will trigger the talkback. By default, the talkback channel will be routed to all the cue mixes ready to be sent to your artist's headphones. Once you've set up the ID software mixer just how you want it, you can save it as a preset, so you can quickly recall all of your settings. To save a current preset, simply go to File, then Save. 
You can now give the configuration a name to remember it by and click Save. You can also export the configuration to send to friends or collaborators or to store alongside your project. To recall the preset, again, simply go to File, but then click Open. A list of your previously saved presets will appear. Choose the one that you wish to use and then click Load. The mixer will now change to that particular preset. We hope this video has given you an idea of the capabilities and powerful features of the ID Software Mixer and that you'll find it a useful tool to add to your workflow. For more information about ID24 or the ID Software Mixer, then please look at the product manual or on our website. And if you have any questions, then please leave a comment or get in touch. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials and video content.